Hello everybody, I'm Cosimo della Santina and today I'm going to talk about a new uh, template model for nonlinear control of soft, soft robots uh, that uh, we called the soft inverted pendulum with a fine curvature. Soft robots are robotic system in which the designer in purposefully introduce some kind of compliance into the mechanics. And of particular interest for us today are continuums of robots, which are made of continuously deformable uh, elements, so to mimic uh, octopuses or trunks of elephants and so on and so forth. Um, a lot of very cool design have been uh, already proposed in the literature. Some of them are here, but uh, the control of these systems remains very much an open problem with a lot of uh, uh, different uh, strategies uh, that have been tried to uh, apply to there, but uh, it's uh, the, the, interesting enough the model-based uh, approach to this to the control of this system is, uh, pro is 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 quite quite new, especially in its uh, dynamic formulation. So this is uh, the topic will be the topic of today's talk, and uh, first of all let's try to understand why this is a so complex problem. So why it's so difficult to do feedback control of continuum and soft robots by, by means of model-based uh, control. Soft robots are typically made as a sequence of actuated segments. And to, but to simplify the analysis here, we will consider just one single actuated segment. And also we'll further simplifying the analysis by considering that all the behavior of the segment can be described by the behavior of its axis, of its main axis. So it's a stylized description of a single, single, single segment in this way, where the gray line is the shape of the, of the segment, describes the shape of the segments. So, which are the challenges here? First of all, the shape of the, of, of the segment is, of course, a function that, for example, can be described by using the, the curvature kappa at each point. And this implies that uh, the state of this of this robot is, in, uh, is of dim infinite dimension because it's a function. Um, on top of that, so we cannot assume this kappa to be small as we can do in other similar classes of uh, infinite dimensional robots like uh, flexible link robots. Finally, uh, we are constrained by the i-dimensionality of the system to have uh, always few inputs with respect to the to the state. So we have high level of underactuation. We therefore propose in this paper to follow a same path that classic uh, control of uh, robots and mechanical system uh, have been followed uh, starting from the end of the 90s which is to simplify the analysis by focusing on specific uh, examples that are uh, low dimensional, two degrees of freedom, but, uh, but underactuated, one degree of actuation, and uh, they often have some kind of instability in them. So that in this way, we can extract uh, uh, general knowledge on, the, on this kind of problems to be applied to more complex systems. And uh, in, specifically, what we propose here is the so-called soft inverted pendulum with a fine curvature, which is shown on the right of this, of this light. So what we want from this model, we want to have uh, to undergo continuum deformation. So the kappa function, the curvature function has to be some function indeed, and not just some constant value. And uh, second of all, we want the kappa to be possibly uh, high. And uh, last but not least, we want it to be a template model. So we want to get it uh, in a way, a description, approximation of such a system in a way that uh, it has just two degrees of freedom and one degree of actuation. Let's start from the first two constraints. Uh, they can be merged together in a single hypothesis, which is that kappa is a generic analytic function. If we have a generic analytic function, we can express it as an infinite summation of monomial terms where, where we put now all the uh, temporal information in the weights theta. And S is just the local coordinate along the, along the shape of the robot. We can therefore apply the third hypothesis, the third characteristics that we want. So just two degrees of freedom by truncating this, uh, um, this infinite summation at the second order. We have now a, a, a fine curvature model. So the curvature is a, a fine function. 
in S, in the local coordinate. And uh, it depends on these two parameters, the theta zero and theta one, which are now to be considered the configuration vector of our robot. So this verifies all that we want from our system. So two degrees of freedom and continuous deformation and possibly large deformation for large theta zero and theta one. But of course, this is not enough. And to that really describe the kinematics, we have to connect these two variables, theta zero and theta one, to position and orientation of all the points along the, the, the structure. So uh, let's consider again a generic point S and uh, or B. And uh, from basic uh, the theory of differential geometry of curves, we get that the orientation is here, the integral of the curvature function, and uh, since the curvature has been assumed to be affine, the result is, uh, is in closet form this one for the orientation of each, of each uh, reference frame, uh, of the infinite reference frame. And then uh, since by using it, we can, uh, we can extract the Cartesian coordinates uh, with respect to the base of each point. For example, the coordinate x is, uh, is, is again obtained by integration. And uh, since uh, we have uh, this uh, clear formula for, for alpha, we can actually solve this integral in, uh, in a, let's say, closed form in this, in this way, which uh, may look com uh, complex, but it's, uh, it's a well-specified uh, well result. And same thing we can do for y coordinates. And what we have is a completely exact description of the soft robot's shape when the curvature is an affine function. And uh, we have here the theta zero and theta one, which are our two configuration variables, how they all connect to to the three uh, values of orientation and postural of each point. And uh, these S and C are the so-called Fresnel integrals, which are functions that are well studied in a lot of fields, like for example, in, uh, in optics. And to let you understand how general is this, uh, is this um, formalism, we can, uh, of this kinematic behavior, we can uh, look at what happens to the robot when we take theta zero equal to one and we move uh, uh, theta one. And uh, this is another example for theta zero equal to minus three pi. And again, we move theta one. And this is uh, instead how the whole workspace look like. So now that we have the kinematics, we can obtain the dynamics by means of Lagrangian formalism. Unfortunately, we don't have time uh, for discuss this in the, here, but you can look at the paper and send me an email if you want to know more. But in a nutshell, what we have is that we have an, um, a description of uh, how to obtain um, Input, uh, input characteristics, a model of elasticity and dissipation, a model of gravity, a model of, in, of the inertia terms, and we can put how to put everything together to have a closed form expression of the robot's dynamics expressing again in this configuration space of dimension two. This is how the open loop evolutions for some cho choice of the system parameters looks like. Um, both in uh, the shape evolution of the shape and the evolution of the only two uh, configurations. And this, this model uh, is also able to present very complex nonlinear behavior due to the bifurcation of equilibria. So if you produce a very slow change of the control action, what happens is that the, the robot will slowly charge its uh, potential energy into, into the structure in uh, more or less 80 seconds, and then in a few seconds, snap, producing a catapult-like uh, catapult -like behavior. And it's very interesting, I think, that such complex behavior can be described by a system which is just two, uh, two degrees of freedom. However, we are control guys, so what we are really interested about is uh, how this thing works uh, for, for control, how, with which kind of control insight we can get from it. So first of all, what we show in the paper is that we can uh, produce a linear change of coordinates uh, from theta to Q, so defined, such that the result is, uh, um, uh, is completely decoupled. So we have a, uh, an actuated part completely decoupled from the un underactuated uh, under part of our robot. And this allows us to uh, 
to do some uh, uh, analysis uh, in terms of feedback realization, just to understand which are the possibilities uh, of which which is our control authority on on this on this system. So we tried both collocated and non-collocated feedback realization. For example, here you have the formula for the collocated one, and uh, then what what comes out analytically. Uh, and you can look at the paper for the derivation is that the, the behavior depends on the uh, stiffness of the of the of the material for low stiffness the unstable equilibrium which is the vertical one so this is the pendulum so the it has a kind of equilibrium in this configuration is uh, is asymptotically stable without the need of any controller uh, there is then an area of uh, of medium uh, of medium uh, stiffness in which uh, the equilibrium is unstable and can be stabilized by means of collocated feedback linearization. For quite low stiffnesses, you can uh, uh, achieve stabilization not with collocated feedback linearization, but you can still uh, get to uh, stabilization with collocated with non-collocated feedback linearization, and this is again an example more are provided into the paper and then for very low stiffnesses you you de facto lose uh, uh, control authority on the under actuated on the non actuated part of the robot and so it there is no possibility of getting um, uh, stabilization of the vertical configuration even with non collocated feedback linearization okay that's all uh, what we uh, what I propose in the in this in this paper was a, is a new template model. Uh, this is intended for studying nonlinear control of soft robots and uh, uh, also for serving as a benchmark for different uh, control techniques uh, within these systems. We propose an analysis of its dynamic behavior and uh, together with its derivation, and we discuss this uh, the stabilization of its unstable equilibrium through feedback linearization. Thank you very much for your attention and for any question that you may have, don't hesitate to send me an email. You can also take a look to my website that you can access to this QR code.